Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. Today we have no saint, um, no designated saint on the calendar. And therefore, as usual in these sorts of days, we will honor the saints of our own lives. Today is Friday, um, which means that we'll be doing the confession um, on page 79. But let us begin on page 75. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. On page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws, draws near. Come, let us adore him. Turning to page 82, let us say the Venite together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Today's Psalms are numbers 16 and 17, beginning on page 599. We'll read them together responsively by whole verse. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion in my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 17. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart, summon me by night. Melt me down, you will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior, 
of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who assault me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. They have closed their heart to pity, and their mouth speaks proud things. They press me hard. Now they surround me, watching how they may cast me to the ground. Like a lion greedy for its prey, and like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront them and bring them down. Deliver me from the wicked by your sword. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand, from those whose portion in life is in this world. Whose bellies you fill for you with your treasure, who are well supplied with children and leave their wealth to their little ones. But at my vindication, I shall see your face. When I awake, I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness. Like this. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson. A reading from the book of Amos. Hear this word that I take up over you in lamentation, O house of Israel. Fallen, no more to rise, is made in Israel, forsaken on her land, with no one to raise her up. For thus says the Lord God, the city that marched out a thousand shall have a hundred left, and that which marched out a hundred shall have ten left. For thus, for thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me and live, but do not seek Bethel, and do not enter into Gilgal, or cross over to Beersheba. For Gilgal surely shall surely go into exile, and Bethel shall come to nothing. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. The one who made the Pleiades in Orion and turns deep darkness into the morning and darkens the day into night, who calls to the waters of the sea and pours them out on the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name, who makes destruction flash out against the strong so that destruction comes upon the fortress. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe, and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord in all the squares, there shall be wailing, and in all the streets, they shall say, alas, alas. They shall come, <clears throat> they shall call the farmers to, to mourning, and those skilled in lamentation to wailing. In all their vineyards, they shall be wailing, for I will pass through the midst of you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. <clears throat> Turning to page 86, let us say together canticle 10, the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor your ways, my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, 
but it will estab it will accomplish oh. that which I have purposed and prosper in that oh. for which I sent it. Okay. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to, um, the, Holy to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson. A reading from the book of Jude. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, who are beloved in God the Father and keep safe, and kept safe for Jesus Christ. May mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Beloved, while eagerly preparing to write to you about the salvation we share, I find it necessary to write and appeal to you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. For certain intruders have stolen in among you, people who long ago were designated for this condemnation as ungodly, who pervert the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Now I desire to remind you, though you are fully informed, that the Lord who once for all saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their own position but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains in deepest darkness for the judgment of the great day. Likewise, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities which in the same manner as they indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural lust, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Yet in the same way, these dreamers also defile the flesh, reject authority, and slander the glorious ones. But when the archangel Michael contended with the devil and disputed about the body of Moses, he did not dare to bring a condemnation of slander against him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these people slander whatever they do not understand, and they are destroyed by those things that, like irrational animals, they know by instinct. Woe to them, for they go the way of Cain, and abandon themselves to Balaam's error for the sake of grain, and perish in Korah's rebellion. These are blemishes on your love feasts, while they feast with you without fear, feeding themselves. They are waterless clouds carried along by the winds, autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea, casting up the foam of their own, shame of their own shame, wandering stars for whom the deepest darkness has been reserved forever. It was also about those that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied, saying, See, the Lord is coming with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict everyone of all the deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers and malcontents. They indulge their own lusts. They are bombastic in speech, flattering people to their own advantage. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. Let us turn to page 93 and say canticle 18, a song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests Priest to, serve to serve our God. God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. The third lesson. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gives a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away one to his farm, 
another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murders, murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now turning to page 96, let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the, at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Keep peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. That your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. We, as we gather ourselves to um, offer our prayers before God, 
I invite you to add your own. We pray this day for the church, for our Anglican communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Barisal within the Church of Bangladesh, for our Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, for our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop, for the Congregation of St. David in Kennebunk and St. Andrew in Newcastle, for the work of the United Bank Offering, and for our own parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Jane, Judy, Marlin, Bishop Curry, Tony, B, Lily, Evie, Patricia, and Fred. We offer continued prayers for Barbara, Rick, Susan, Bob, Michaela, Sarah, Ross, James, and Pyong. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Berlin, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for peoples in places of violence or oppression, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine and the innocent victims of the fighting in Gaza. We pray for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to cooperate with God's earth in mitigating the climate crisis. We pray for our enemies and for those who wish us harm, and that all people come to understand that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to first love our neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our own nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, members of Congress, especially Susan and Angus, our senators, and Shelley and Jared, our representatives, for Janet, our governor, and Kara, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays this week, including Lorraine, Lee, and Inez. And we pray for the departed, for Jenny Polson, Robert Gardner, Kaylee, and Zeke, for victims of the wars in, the, in Ukraine and in the Holy Land, for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now turning to page 101, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now let us say together a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. 
Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. This brings us to the end of our service for the day and for the week. As always, we are happy and grateful that you've been able to be with us and hope that you'll be with us again soon, perhaps Monday morning. In the meantime, may we all know the, the uh, presence of God in our lives this day and find ways of reflecting that presence out into a very needy and very hurting world. Again, thank you for being with us. May God bless us all this day. See you soon. <music>